Uh, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, we are waiting for others to join, uh, so we will start session soon.
everyone please note that we are waiting five more minutes for the participants to join.
uh good morning everyone i think we can start with the session uh but just uh before starting with the session just let me know if you can hear me properly and my screen is visible just drop yes in the chat box okay thank you everyone well thank you for joining us today in this webinar uh, my name is saili dhore and i am the host for today's webinar well it's it is a pleasure to welcome you all to our webinar and our goal today is to provide you with actionable knowledge and we encourage you to participate by asking questions and definitely engage with us throughout the session well now i'd like to introduce you to the sponsor of this event uh, that is synergetics Synergetics India is a leading IT training and consulting firm. Well, it is specializing in empowering business with tailored solutions to enhance workforce capabilities and drive innovation. Well, with uh, decades of expertise, it partners with global organization to deliver impactful learning and development programs. Well, uh, today's webinar. Sorry, here are some. solutions that synergetics provide that's persona based onboarding solution onboarding add-on i'm so sorry for the glitch yeah here are some solution uh, that's persona based onboarding onboarding add-on certification solution certification add-on reskilling emerging technology training certification hackathon cloud adoption latest technology training sales resales training practice playbook and architecting well today's webinar is also organized by etc community that is emerging technology community and microsoft and synergetics well etc community is open to all who are eager and interested to learn and explore emerging technologies uh, well for that you just uh, need to follow our groups on meetup for that you have to download the meetup app on your phone and follow our groups well you can scan this code and i have already drop all the links to join our meetup communi communities uh, you can just uh, scroll up and you will find the links i'll be dropping the links again so don't worry oh uh, well now there is a small code of conduct Uh, so everyone please take a note that you cannot take screenshot of this presentations and can't do the screen recording of webinar yes today speaker for this training is mr mahendra shinde uh, he is a microsoft certified trainer and currently working with synergetics as a practitioner uh, mahendra sir uh, i'll request you to switch on your camera and uh, introduce yourself yeah just give me a yes sir hello sir yeah am i am i audible to all of you right now uh yes sir hello okay so yeah hi everyone my name is mahendra shinde and uh, uh at this session we are going to discuss uh, devops with uh, github copilot is my camera on already i am not sure oh uh, no sir it's not on can you switch it's on not your on right No, no. I I had my camera switched on, but I'm not sure. Um, no problem, sir. You can. Hello. Let me check. Just give me a minute. Yes, sir. Okay. Is my okay now? I guess uh, fine. 
So yeah, hi everyone. My name is Mahindra Shinde. Uh, I'm Microsoft Certified Trainer and uh, speaker for this uh, today's event, DevOps with uh, GitHub Copilot. Okay. Is that fine if I switch off my camera now? Yes, sir. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So what I'll do now is I'll share my screen. Uh, you all let me know if my screen is visible to you. Just a minute. Sharing. Right away. OK. So I hope my screen is visible to everyone right now. OK, fine. So let's get started. But before we start, I just wanted to know, uh, like, how many of you? Wait a second. Uh, hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sorry to disturb you, but huh, now is now your screen okay. is visible. Uh, let me just announce a short notice. Uh, yeah, if sure. it is OK. Yeah, uh, so everyone, please stay connected till the end. As I as I have in a short announcement, I'll make it in break. So please don't leave the sessions, OK? So you can start now. OK, thank you. Thank you. So right. Here we are talking about DevOps and GitHub Copilot. So before we start with the session, I just wanted to know how many of you have uh, worked with the DevOps, any DevOps tool for that matter, could be Jenkins, GitHub, GitLab, Azure Pipeline, anything. Yeah. Okay, so we have one person who has worked with GitLab. Jaya, thank you. Abbasi Punawala, yes. Ganesh, no. Okay, I guess this is about screen sharing, probably. No, all these is about DevOps. Okay, fine, no worries. So uh, there are two different things we are trying to integrate here together. Number one is the DevOps, and number two is GitHub Copilot. So we will first try to understand what exactly is a DevOps in a very small, brief kind of introduction, and then we will move to GitHub Copilot, and then how we can put them both together. So very first thing, uh, this is the agenda basically. We will just try to understand what is DevOps, what is GitHub Copilot, how GitHub Copilot can enhance DevOps, like what are the areas where GitHub Copilot can, uh, you know, enhance DevOps practices or assist your, some of your DevOps practices and workflows. Then I will show you how to set up GitHub Copilot and then some of the use cases and of course a live demo. So very first thing here, what is DevOps? DevOps is a union of people, process, product to enable continuous delivery of value to the end users. So it doesn't matter whether you are a developer or whether you are system administrator, whether you are a tester or whichever field you might be in. In IT industry, whichever field you might be in or whichever role you might be currently uh, working on, DevOps is actually something which is common to all of us. Why? Because in DevOps, it is basically multiple different people, multiple different roles are involved in the same, you can say, culture. DevOps is more like a culture to build a quality product, deliver a quality product to your customers in time by collaborating, by setting up collaboration between all the job groups. So developers will interact, collaborate with QA testers and with IT operations. Example of collaboration I'll give you. Like for example, uh, you know, there could be scenarios where developers have built an entire application which works totally fine, work totally fine in their own development environment or in on their local machines, local development environment, but quite possible that when the same application is actually taken in a QA team, when QA team tries to run 
some test on the same application, it might fail. And then you have to go back to development team saying that these are the defects we have found. You need to fix them. Similarly, application might be working just fine, had no defects, but there could be some compliances issues. Like, for example, you have built an application which uses an outdated language runtime, which is no longer supported. Like Java 7 is no longer supported now. Even Java 8 has almost ended its uh, support lifecycle now. And the standard version of Java you should use in production now is Java 11. But what if your developer has still used the old version? Now your IT pros, your IT administrators might raise an alarm saying that we will not be able to or we should not use this application and take it to production because, because of these compliances. We cannot use application build with a non-supported language runtime. Or there could be a security vulnerabilities into it, right? Now, DevOps is a union of people, process, and product to make sure whatever we are delivering to the customer is a quality product. To ensure that all these different job roles, all these different teams need to regularly collaborate with each other. And most of the interaction that happens between development, QA, operations, right? Most of these processes should be automated. Now, guess what? In DevOps, when we automate certain processes, there are few workflows that we use here in DevOps. Number one, continuous integration workflow. Okay. Number two, continuous deployment workflow. Number three, continuous delivery workflow. Okay. And then there are others like continuous monitoring, right? Continuous feedback, and so on. Anyways. What is benefit of DevOps to most of the organizations? There was a survey conducted by State of DevOps uh, in year 2018, and these were the findings. Organizations who migrated to DevOps or organizations who embraced DevOps, uh, they found 46 times more deployment frequency. So their deployment frequency increased by 46 times. They were able to deploy their application more frequently, which resulted in faster time to market. That means the time which is taken to properly build a product and then deliver it to the customer, they were able to run it fast, they were able to achieve their deadlines well in time, that the a number of times they could uh, deploy their application increased, lower change failure rate. Any idea what is change failure rate, by the way, CFR, change failure rate. Change failure rate means it might be possible that you implemented certain changes to your software product. And unfortunately, the change you implemented did not work. It failed. And what you have to do is you have to roll it back. What do you mean by rollback? General word, basically. Tell me the literal meaning of rollback. Anyone? Hello? It can uh, go to for the previous version or it yes. can be failure. It take to uh, yes. uh, previous version will be taken and then apply from that deployment status. Right, right. So Raghavendra, it's, it's like this. Uh, let me give you a very simple example. You decided or from the customer change request itself, there was a plan to completely, uh, you know, rebuild the user interface of application. But then when the new user interface was built and deployed, unfortunately, it was not compatible with some old devices and some old client. So people started raising complaint that the new user interface is all good, but it's not compatible with most of the clients. And then you have to take the heavy decision. Even though the new implementation is better in look and feel, and because it's not compatible with most of the people, you have to take a hard decision to roll back to older version, whose user interface was pretty much very simple, not as good looking as the new one, but it is compatible with everyone. It works in all the devices. And therefore, with heavy decision, you have to go back to your older version. That is change failure rate. Right? DevOps actually allows you to lower the change failure rate. It is because 
Number one, automation. Number two, automation again. And number three, again, automation. First automation, it's because you were able to run the test much faster. Think this way. You deployed your application in, let's say, a QA environment, in a staging environment, run through test, right? And if test fail, select the feedback, give it to developer, let them make the changes. And as soon as the changes were, uh, changes were implemented, rerun it, test it again. With automation, you can repeat this particular cycle number of times. And once everything is verified, everything is compatible, then take it to production. It's because automation allows you to run those same, same things multiple times in multiple iterations. Automation will also, you know, kind of shorten the time it takes to run all those operations again and again. Okay, so with DevOps, you get 46 times more deployment frequency, seven times lower change failure rate, 2,555 times faster lead time for changes. So time for changes is very fast. Like if customer has raised a change request, yes, you measure it by using Jira tickets, number of tickets raised in Jira, right? Okay. And 2,604 times faster mean time to recover. Mean time to recover means how fast you can recover from a defect or an error. So DevOps overall gave us all these benefits. And this is the reason why most organizations have slowly migrated or slowly transformed themselves into a DevOps organization, an organization who uses DevOps. The funny thing is now, many a time, you may not be aware that your organization is already following DevOps, right? Like for example, when I asked some people like whether your organization uses DevOps, they said not sure about that. But then I started asking them questions like, do you use some kind of agile board or Kanban board? There were people who were using something like Jira. Then there were people who were using something like uh, 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 Azure board. There were people who were using some other kind of Kanban board, online Kanban board. There were even people who were maintaining their Kanban board in Microsoft Excel, right? There were people who had a physical board, agile board in their workspace. There was a wall with lots of sticky notes. So you are already following agile methodology. Many of them were already using something like Jenkins to build their project. Somebody was using Atlassian Bamboo instead of Jenkins. There was another one who was using GitLab. There was another one who was using GitHub right and so on all these are devops tools basically you are using devops are you getting my point fine so this is how a devops workflow looks alike the left side is dev and the right side is ops so what is developers responsibility here yes kanban agile lean all these are different uh, you can say frameworks right for maintaining your, uh, uh, or tracking your project, basically. So we have dev and ops. We have planning, coding, building, testing, and release. This part under dev. So what your dev team or what your developer team is supposed to do? Your developer team should simply just plan all the activities first. Like for example, uh, the very first thing you should implement before you move to DevOps is agile project planning, some kind of agile methodology or Scrum, Lean, whatever. So if you are already followed an agile methodology, under agile methodologies, we don't build entire application in just one iteration. We split it into multiple iterations or we split entire activity, entire project into multiple small iterations, multiple small sprint. Okay, which word do you use more often? Iteration or a sprint? Yes. Jaya? Jaya Nisant. Okay. Sprint. Abasi uses a sprint. Means it's a scrum methodology you are using inter internally. Right? Okay. So in your current sprint or your current iteration, you must have selected certain 
functionalities or certain features to be implemented now. We call it sprint backlog, okay, or backlog for current iteration. So from those current iteration backlog, you start the planning activity. Like these are the features I will implement in this iteration. And these are the features, functionalities I will implement in next iteration later. Then you start implementing it. That's the coding part. You build it. Then you either run the unit or integration test. Okay. And if the tests are all positive, then you release it. Release means just mark it as this is now ready for deployment. It should now go in deployment for the further test. Now, this is the activity developer will do. This is the developer's responsibility. Take what is current, what take whatever plan is there for current iteration, receive the current iterations plan, current sprint plan, implement it, build it, test it, and release it. Release means I have done working on it. Let's take it further. Now, once the release is made by developer, ops team will take the released product or released uh, version. Deploy it in multiple different environment, dev environment, QA environment, staging environment, pre-production environment, whatsoever it might be. So take the application, deploy it in environment, operate it, means manage the entire environment and application, monitor it. Okay. Now, please remember, deploy, operate, and monitor. These are the activities of operations team. Operations team might be actually, uh, you can say managing, multiple environment for the same application. It might be possible that most of the applications nowadays, most of the applications nowadays will have around four different environment for single application, a dev environment, QA environment, staging environment, and the final production environment. And the team who's responsible for maintaining all these environments is your operations team. Yes, yes, those are all activities you do in uh, your current sprint. Sprint plan, sprint demo, retrospective, measure velocity, burn down chart, burn up chart, all that you create as a part of your current sprint. Okay. So operations people are responsible for maintaining the server environment and application which is deployed. Now, Many of these environments might be used for some kind of testing. You might be running some kind of web UI testing. You might be running some kind of security pen test, penetration test. You might be running some kind of uh, uh, performance test, like for example, load test, stress test, and so on, right? And based on the result of these tests, please remember the results will be then again feedback to your development team. It might be possible that application developer has implemented all the functionality which is required. All the use cases are already implemented, but there could be a performance issue, right? There could be a vulnerability detected somewhere in your project. Maybe a third party dependency has some kind of vulnerability, right? Or it might be like uh, uh, the language runtime, the built in libraries might also have some kind of uh, vulnerabilities in them or maybe the code written by the developer might have some kind of defects in it, which cannot be detected in unit and integration test, but when you run a system test or when you do the performance test, that, that time you found certain defects. All this information will be then sent back to developer to further improve the project, okay? So there is a possibility that developer might have to rework on everything. So you may you will give some feedback to developer and that feedback will be then incorporated in the next sprint. Developer will then work on it, implement everything, release it back to the operations team. Operations team will then take the new release, put it into their QA staging environment. And finally, if all the tests are fine, then it goes to production. Okay, so the entire process you can see here the overall symbol used here is symbol of infinity this is actually a symbol of infinity which is a never ending process so it will keep flowing like this there is no end to it it will keep flowing like this right so the left side is dev and the right side is 
operations and there should be a proper collaboration between both of them. What all different tools are there available in market for the complete end-to-end -end DevOps? Like for example, you can take for example a tool like Jenkins. Jenkins is a tool which can be used only for the CI and CD, continuous integration and continuous delivery and deployment. Rather, Jenkins is more popular for the CI, continuous integration part, not for CD, continuous delivery and deployment part. Okay, many, many a times I have seen people calling Jenkins as Jenkins CI, even their official documentation, they use term Jenkins CI, right? Then we have something like Azure Pipeline, which is a Microsoft tool. Earlier, Microsoft had a tool called TFS, Team Foundation Server. Later, Microsoft rebranded it as Azure DevOps. From TFS, it became Azure DevOps, okay? Which inside which they created dedicated services like Azure Board for Agile project planning, Azure Repo for Git repo version control system, and then uh, by pipelines, basically, for CI CD. Yes, uh, Jenkins, the spelling is J-E, not G-E, basically, Apasi. G Jenkins CI was actually uh, you can see a clone of Hudson. Rather a funny fun point about Jenkins and Hudson, their relationship. Let me show you even their logos. Okay, so the young young man here on the left is the Jenkins, and this one is the Hudson, the old one. So. Jenkins is entirely made from the Hudson source code. So you can say it just inherits everything from Hudson. Most of the Hudson plugins are already compatible in Jenkins. Okay, fine. So Jenkins is a CI. Azure DevOps is a complete package which provides you even version control system, then agile project planning as your board and pipelines. Similarly, we have another platform which is GitHub. Now, why GitHub is so popular? GitHub is already an open source platform which currently are hosting lots of popular OSS product, open source product. Give you an example. Let me take you to one very interesting project on GitHub. Okay, so this one. GitHub.com slash Torvald slash Linux. Any, any idea what this repository is all about? A complete. What is the code? It is, it is Linux kernel source code built by Linus Torvald. Right? This repository is owned by, this is Torvald, Linux Tor, uh, Linus Torvald's repository. You can see he is the one. And this is the Linux uh, source code. A Linux kernel source code. Currently, it has more than 15,000 contributors. It's an open source project, basically. And GitHub hosts many such open source projects, not just Linux source control, uh, sorry, Linux uh, kernel source code, but it has lot many different types of open source projects already hosted on GitHub. Most of the frameworks, like Node-based framework like Angular, React, even their source code is completely hosted on GitHub. Okay, it's not just Linux operating systems uh, source code kernel, uh, but many other projects are currently hosted on GitHub. So GitHub is one of the very popular open source platform, complete DevOps platform, which has lots of new features to assist developers. So what kind of features GitHub provide? GitHub has Git repositories, as you can rightly see. This is the Git repository. And you can see there are more than 15,000 contributors to the single repository. Not just that, this repository is already forked, or there are already 54,000 copies of this repository made by many different users, as you can see here, right? GitHub also has a very interesting workflow called pull request, which is used for code reviews. So every time, Yes, even the Node.js. Let's say for, for example, if I just go to GitHub and let us search for Node.js, right? So 
here it is. This is already recently it was shifted. Now this is a Node.js repository. Now what is this? The entire Node.js runtime, its source code is right here on GitHub. Yes, you know there is another alternate way to install Node.js in your machine. Download this repository, compile it, build it, and use it at Node.js runtime. There is even a make file included here. Wait a second. Uh, where are the instructions to build it? Yeah, so there is already instructions given. You can download the source code, build it and use it as, as a node runtime on your local machine. OK, they have already given all the necessary details on how, how you can build and use it on your own machine. Acha, OK, you are using Ionic node. I'm not sure about that is included here because uh, some of the clones might be maintained. Most of the Ionic based applications are currently hosted on GitHub, but Ionic itself, I cannot find it anywhere here. Ionic team, Ionic framework. Yes, I found it now. So this is Ionic framework. This is a cross platform UI tool which uses Node.js, of course, and you can see the office. This is the official source code repository of Ionic. OK, it is also on GitHub. No, you cannot do that. You'll have to in case if you want to use it, you have to create a fork of it. You have to fork it. You cannot use the original repository. You have to create a fork and use the fork repository. Yeah, okay? yeah, Mahendra. Yeah, Mahendra, yes. it's possible to fork it. But uh, we are not even allowed to use the GitHub, you know, so we cannot connect to the GitHub and do mirror yes. to mirror repository, uh, you know, like we cannot do. Mirroring. Yeah, those are right, right. Yeah. This is because organizations might certain uh, sometimes set some kind of restrictions. Exactly. See, there is one there is one issue with open source. Issue with open source is that because source code is right there open in front of you. It is very much possible for someone to download the source code, make the changes, and use the modified code, modified runtime in their application. Are you getting my point? One of the danger of open source for many organizations is that what if instead of using a standard Node.js, which you can download from Node.js.org, there is a possibility that somebody will simply go to GitHub Node.js source code, edit the source code, add his or her malicious code inside it, build it and use that as a Node.js runtime in entire organization. Are you getting my point? That's the reason why. That's the reason why many organizations might put certain restrictions on usage of open source framework. But please remember there is a way you can avoid that. How you can avoid that is number one, in many organizations, you don't get installation permissions in every user. Installation, all software installation should be done by their support team, IT support team. And when IT support team will do the installation, they will never install anything from source code directly. They will go to the official uh, download pages, official download repositories, let's say Node.js.org, download the package from it, verify the signature. Do you know there is a checksum for every installable file? Do the checksum, check whether the binary file downloaded for installation is the correct one, not the modified one, and then do the installation. That way you can avoid it. Yeah. Anyway, so my point here is GitHub is a very, uh, you can say, complete OSS platform. And even before it offered features like uh, Agile project planning and uh, CI CD workflow, it was pretty much popular for most other. OSS framework. GitHub now offers you unlimited public and private Git repositories. OK, earlier there was there used to be a limit on how many public repositories you can create. Yes, running checksum is must 
now by all the software teams, right? Most of the automation tools actually do that for you automatically. Means you don't have to manually run a checksum. There are automation tools which will run the checksum before they do install any kind of install. Anyways, so GitHub provides now for those organizations who are afraid of OSS framework. Do you know GitHub also provides on premise software solution or uh, you can say a licensed version of GitHub Enterprise which you can run within your enterprise or within your data centers. OK, so there are organizations who might have their own local data centers, right? If you have the enough server capacity, you can install and run GitHub from your. Private data center. And of course, then to connect to that particular GitHub. You won't write GitHub.com. You will write your organization's custom domain name. OK, like myorganization.github.com or github.myorganization.com, something like that. GitHub has pricing plans for all those. Let me show you some of the features available here in GitHub Enterprise. So this is GitHub Enterprise. This is what I was talking about. It has on premise version also available. GitHub on premise and all these features it provides like for example, uh, you get multiple GitHub repositories, GitHub code spaces, uh, then SOC one, SOC two, SOC uh, type two reports which are created annually. You get audit logs, you get SAML single sign on to connect it with other systems, right? You get around 50,000 CI CD minutes for CI CD workflows basically. OK. And uh, wait a second. This is the enterprise platform that they do offer now. The enterprise platform is now completely uh, integrated with their own AI tools. OK, GitHub Copilot. So AI based tool that will actually help you write in every activity right from development to deployment. OK. Fine. You can scale it as per your own uh, uh, requirement, basically. Fine. Let's go back. Now, multiple pricing plans of GitHub, the one which I am using right now, let me show you which plan I'm using. Uh, actually, I'm using this professional, uh, sorry, I guess I'm using uh, enterprise trial plan. OK, earlier my plan was free plan. Let me show you this one. This is my GitHub account and let's see if I have access to GitHub Enterprise. OK, I had one trial account created some time back. Uh, but my access to the trial has already expired. Fine. So let's go back to my personal profile. And this is my GitHub personal profile. And uh, yeah, fine. This is my GitHub personal pro account. I have access to GitHub Copilot. This is my GitHub Copilot uh, business edition I'm using right now. You can see it here. I have access to GitHub Copilot in IDE and GitHub Copilot in uh, browser. I even have GitHub Copilot in CLI, but right now I'm not using any CLI tool. Sorry, so I have GitHub Copilot already integrated in my account here, as you can see. OK, sorry, sorry. So this is the GitHub as a platform now that we were talking about. So GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot is a tool which is a basically an AI based code assistant that can 
help you in almost all your activities. Right when you were just trying to, uh, let's say, build a code or you are a developer, you are writing some piece of code and GitHub Copilot will assist you in writing a code. Or it could be used to provide you certain kind of suggestions, how you can improve it, how you can uh, modify it, or you can just write certain comments. OK, and GitHub Copilot will generate the code based on that comments. Or you can also use GitHub Copilot to explain you a part of your own code. Like, for example, just select the lines of code that you want GitHub Copilot to explain it to you. Select it, ask GitHub Copilot, explain me this. And GitHub Copilot will explain what exactly that code actually contains. Please remember, GitHub Copilot is a type of generative AI tool. AI means artificial intelligence. And what is generative AI? Hello? Shailesh? Rakesh, Ravi Teja, anyone? What is generative AI? Heard about it? Do you know any other example of generative AI? Chat GPT. Yes, that's right, Satya. OK, so generative AI is basically AI tools that can generate the contents like chat GPT can generate content. Similarly, GitHub Copilot can also generate contents. Now. If you are new to GitHub Copilot, GitHub right now provides you a 30 days free trial of GitHub Copilot. OK, uh, now the time when I actually took the screenshot, it was giving us 60 days free trial, but that's not true now. It, it now provides only 30 days free trial for GitHub Copilot. Anyways, once you get the GitHub Copilot, you can use GitHub Copilot directly in your IDEs, including Visual Studio Code and so on. So how we can use GitHub Copilot in DevOps then? More common use case is to use GitHub Copilot in developer IDEs. But other than that, you can use GitHub Copilot in CI CD workflows, you can also use GitHub Copilot in writing infrastructure as a code and also for generating the test cases. So you can generate CI CD pipeline. You can automate CI CD pipeline. You can generate infrastructure as a code templates, whatever tool might be using. You want Terraform, you want Ansible code snippets. You can do that. You can run or you can even generate unit test cases from Copilot. So let me show you an, a very small, simple example of how I can use Copilot, and then we will see how we can use it in DevOps. So to give you an example, what I'll do now is I will open VS Code, which is my Visual Studio Code text editor, smart text editor. Here it is. Now, what I have already done is I already have several plugins installed in my VS Code environment. Let me show you that. Here it is. You can see Copilot is already integrated or Copilot extension is already installed in my VS Code environment. OK, you can install it from the extensions manager. So if you go to the extensions, you can search for Copilot and you will get the extension here. But please remember the extension itself is just a UI. In order to actually use Copilot, you must first enable Copilot or get the Copilot free trial from your GitHub account. And once you get the free trial, only then install this extension and configure it inside your VS Code environment. So I already have the extension installed and I already have my GitHub Copilot subscription ready. OK, so I can use this particular extension directly in my VS Code environment. OK. So let's say, for example, I am a developer and I wanted to use or I wanted to use Copilot in a Java project. So let's create a Java project from VS Code. Uh, let's say I wanted to create a new Spring Boot project. Looks like, um, OK, the extension is not installed. For project management, let me install it.
VS Code requires lots of different extensions to do lot different activities, basically. I could have used create.NET project, but fortunately, unfortunately, I do not have any uh, .NET SDK installed in my current machine. Uh, we can use it from Eclipse Marketplace. I never tried this, to be uh, frank. I never tried to check if Copilot extension is available for Eclipse in Eclipse Marketplace. There is a high possibility that it might be already available, but then there is no official extension for Eclipse created by GitHub yet. Okay. So there might be a user created. Some open source user might have created a plugin for Eclipse, right? But official standard supported plugin is available right now only for VS Code, uh, NeoVim, and JetBrains IDEs. Like uh, if you use uh, IntelliJ IDEA, there is a GitHub Copilot extension, official extension available for it. Looks like I should now create the project. So I'm creating a Maven project. And let's say I'm using the latest available version. My package name should be Mahindra. My project name should be demo one. And I'm just building a jar file. I wanted to use Java version 17 and dev tools. Yeah, and Spring Web. That's it. So I created a new project here, and what I will do is I create project in a directory here on my D drive. Copilot demos generate into this folder. Copilot demos looks like it's done. I'll just open this project folder now. Yeah, here it is. So I created a project, but unfortunately for me. I don't remember much of the things in Java now. So can I just ask Copilot to help me with this Java project building? Let's try this out. So this is my Copilot. You can see Copilot panel here on the right side. Ask Copilot. I can ask my Copilot any questions. So let's wait for it. Copilot is currently open in VS Code with the same folder demo 01. So Copilot has access to the entire workspace right now. Looks like it's still loading the project. Just wait for a minute. Okay. Let's ask Copilot to do something. I don't want this Java project configuration. Let's ask Copilot to do something. What I want to do is I just want to ask Copilot to generate a REST API. Generate or add a new REST resource customers with customer model class, which must include following attributes. Now, the attributes which I want here are First name, last name, date of birth, address. Okay. Let's see if Copilot can generate something for me. Now, whatever I have written here in the chat window, this thing is called prompt. P R O M P T, prompt. Right. I entered a prompt. I gave some instructions to Copilot. And guess what? Customer uh, Copilot is actually giving a code to me. Notice that. Hello. This is the code generated by Copilot. This is generative AI. But now I'm not sure where to keep this customer.java or where should I write this thing? So. There are options here. Apply in editor, insert at cursor, copy, or can you see an option here? Insert into new file. But let's say I'm so dumb, I don't know where this should go. So uh, let's ask another question to Copilot. Where should I create customer.java in current project? So let's check if Copilot can tell me 
exactly which directory or which location I should create this customer.java in my current project. So here, Copilot is telling me that you should create this in this particular folder path. This is where you should create it, src main java. So let's do one thing. Let's copy this and let's try to create a new file here with this path. So it should be under src java main. Okay, done. File is created. You can see the file is automatically created properly in the given path. Yes. Now let's go back. You can scroll up and where is customer.java? Here is my customer.java. What I'll do is I'll just copy this code and I'll paste it here. Now, please remember one thing. You cannot totally depend on Copilot because Copilot as a generative tool can still make mistakes. Are you getting my point? You cannot just expect it to just copy and paste and it works. Like there are many issues with this Copilot generated code. Like you can see all those errors. First of all, the package name is not matching. The package name generated by Copilot is com.example.demo.model, but my actual package name is not the same. It's different. So what should I do then? There is a fix available from Copilot. If you just keep a pointer and there is one option here, did you notice fix using Copilot? So let Copilot generate some instructions for me. So Copilot is saying you should actually name it like this and accept. Yes, I accepted the changes introduced by Copilot. After that, there are still errors. Like, for example, what is this java.persistence? Cannot be resolved. How will I fix this? Again, I'll use fix using Copilot. And now Copilot is saying that inside your pom.xml, you must include this dependency. But I don't expect or I don't accept this right now. Uh, this is because uh, this is basically JPA, Java Persistence API, which requires some kind of database to be used behind the scene. So let's try something else. If you just scroll down, you will notice this was the customer repository. This was the customer controller. And these were the, okay, they are using H2 database. There is already unnecessary dependency instructions uh provided by copilot earlier so let's use that i'll close this i don't want to make any changes here now i'm just giving you an example by the way right don't uh means if you people do not have any experience with java don't worry here we are using java project as just a tool okay fine now here i'm not sure where is pom.xml so i will just click on the link and guess what VS Code actually opened the file for me, and now I want to add this to this file. So let's scroll up and down. So there are dependencies already added. Let me keep a cursor here. And there is already an option, apply in editor. Good. So you can see the dependencies are now automatically added to the pom.xml file. And you can see here there is an option accept the changes or discard. Now you don't even have to worry about where should I copy this code. When you click on apply IDE, it will identify where it should be placed. Right? You don't have to worry about where to copy and paste it. So this is already done for me. Looks like it has already done a proper verification. Like these are the two things only required. This one is already somewhere implemented. Accept the change. Now save this. Let's go back to customer.java and most of the errors should start to disappear now. Wait a second. JPA I have included, right? So the error should go away now. Looks like it requires application to be reloaded or project to be reloaded in uh, current class path. Let's wait for it. The error should go away in some time. And if it is not, already pom.xml is updated now. I can see that. Where is the option for Maven update? Yeah, just reload the project. This should work fine. 
After reloading the project, the error should disappear. Fine. Persistence API. OK, I guess the dependency is still required. Fine. Let's take the fix provided by JPX. Uh, sorry, fix provided by Copilot. So as per Copilot, this is the dependency I should add. So let's do one thing. Let's copy this code and let's add this to my poem.xml somewhere here. Sequence is not important, actually. You can just place it anywhere in your uh, uh, poem.xml. There is a duplicate statement. This is not required. And let's just format it properly. Application needs to be reloaded. Close. Looks like all the errors disappeared. So please remember, Copilot is not a replacement for you. Now, I was able to actually follow all the Copilot instructions here in the project because I already knew Java as a programming language. So do you think that somebody who has never worked with Java can use Copilot to create this type of project? Answer is no. You still need to know a little bit of Java. It's not like Copilot will replace Java developers. Am I clear, Ravi Kumar? Hello? Copilot is not there to replace anyone. Yeah, but obviously, it will replace those people who will not who will who, who used to write code manual will be replaced by people who will use AI based assistance to assist them in the in the code writing. So please remember one thing wherever you use copilot or wherever we use AI right in development operations or DevOps, you will be the one in a pilot seat or you will be the one who's taking entire responsibility. Co-pilot is just your assistance. Are you getting my point? Yes. So if you have written Java code for 15 years, Copilot will actually help you to write. Right. Same piece of code, which used to take, let's say, two hours, Copilot will help you to build it in 10 minutes. But Copilot cannot replace you because code generated by Copilot, it is you who will understand or it is you who will have to validate whether it will work. Like right? the copilot generated a code directly for me. And because I have Java experience, I knew that they are trying to use JPA. Whereas in the prompt, nowhere I mentioned to use JPA. I just so I just said, like, okay, generate a customer class and customer resource. Copilot generated JPA code for me. Right. So you should still know what you are doing. Copilot will just assist you. And the things that you can do in two hours. Copilot will actually help you. Yes, it can also identify vulnerabilities and fix them for you. Yes, it can also do that. Rakesh. To show you an example. Wait a second. Let me add a dependency here. And what I can do is I will add a dependency. Which is org dot. J unit. OK, then. Artifact ID. J unit. I'm not sure if, if there is a version of J unit with this version number tag available. I'm not sure if I have written a correct version of JUnit here, but looks like this is a wrong version. Let's de let's deliberately use JUnit version, uh, uh, not JUnit. Let's use Log4j. Log4j has lots of uh, you can say vulnerabilities detected some time back. Log4j. 
log4j is basically a small uh, package which is used for logging and uh, uh, logging frameworks. And this is the old version of log4j, version 1.2.17. Now, what, ha what happens if inside your code, you are accidentally using a very old version of dependency, which is already deprecated, which is already outdated? Can Copilot help me to find vulnerabilities in here? Answer is yes. There is already five direct vulnerabilities found by OSV provider. Notice this. Hello. Yes. Let's yes. keep a pointer here. You can see here my VS Code environment is already giving me these suggestions or these inputs that the log 4 j version you are using currently has high number of security vulnerabilities and the severity is critical. Copilot is giving me a fix on this. Let's see if Copilot can fix this for me. So Copilot is giving me this suggestion saying that instead of using old legacy version of block 4 j 1.2 star, it is suggesting me to use the latest version 2.17, which has less number of vulnerabilities. So let's see if 2.17 version of block 4 j really have less amount of vulnerabilities or almost no vulnerabilities. Let's check that. So this is log4j version 2.17. Which one I'm using right now? 2.17.1. Did you notice 2.17.1? As per Maven Central, 2.17.1 has zero vulnerabilities, whereas 2.17.0 has one vulnerability. Did you notice that? Hello? Right? So. Copilot or my AI assistant is actually helping me to fix these type of vulnerabilities. Now, what is benefit here? What happened if I never had some tool like Copilot? There was a possibility that I might end up building a project with code which has vulnerabilities, build it completely, test it, run it, and finally, when it takes when when I took it to production, my IT operations team might then reject my application, saying that inside your project you are using old outdated vulnerabilities, uh, sorry, old outdated packages with lot of vulnerabilities. So I cannot deploy this application on production environment. Take it back, rebuild it, and give me a fresh one. Now, don't you think it will then take a lot more time to fix it and again build it and then again give it back to operations team? Yes. Is that clear? Hello. So Copilot yeah, can yeah. help you fix these type of things or AI assistant can allow you to fix your mistakes before it goes to production or before it actually goes to the next environment to the next process. You can do it right there on time. Anyways, this should now rebuild. So this is one use case. Now, after I did this, there is still something left. Like, for example, I still don't have this customer repository interface created. So what I will do now, I will ask Copilot, like create a customer repository class for me. So here it is. Customer repository. Insert into new file and let's save this file. Okay, the file name should be customer, sorry, repository. So this is customer repository.java. Again, there is a suggestion here. Let's fix it using Copilot. Okay, this one also I need to fix. Now you don't always have to use Copilot to fix the things. If it is too easy for you to fix, go ahead and fix it manually. OK, like for example, for this, the better fix is not to use import statement because both of them are in the same package. You don't need import statement for something which is already in the same package. And then we need this customer controller class. So let's. Use this customer controller. In a. 
Oh, this should be in a separate repository package, actually. Repository. And let's move this to repository package. After I did this, obviously this will generate some kind of uh, uh, code error. I guess they have already fixed it. Fine, good. Similarly, I'll create a new folder for controller. And inside controller, I'll create this new file. Customer controller. So this should go under controller and we'll call it customer controller. Fine. So customer controller class created. Same way, I will just do a quick fix. It might be better to just do the fix manually instead of asking for copilot help every time because looks like typing it out directly will save a lot of time. Demo one model. OK, there is no separate model package here. OK, so customer endpoint is created. Anything else required right now? I, I don't think so. Everything is done. Now I will ask Copilot, how do I build this project? So let's open a terminal and Copilot can not just give you suggestion in code, but they can even help you with what to write. Uh, Pavish, don't worry about Java right now. Don't have to worry about Java. I just use Java as one of the tool. You can implement, you can do the same thing with other programming languages also, right? I'm just giving you an example of how Copilot helps the developers. Our next demo, what we will do is, I will show you how it can be used by DevOps engineers. So let's see how we can use Copilot here as well. Even in terminal, Copilot will help you understand how to run this code. Like, for example, how do I build the project from terminal or from command line? So let's see if Copilot can give me a suggestion here. Oh, now this is an example, I guess, how Copilot can make a mistake. You know what is the mistake? Copilot doesn't know that it's a Java application. Copilot is actually feeling like it's a .NET application, and it gave me an example, command .NET build. But this is wrong, right? So you should discard. Let's try again. And what I will do, how do I build Spring Boot project? So you should just change your prompt, right? And let's see if Copilot can assist you now. Now Copilot is giving you an option, use this command. So this is the command. Let's see if this can work. Can you see a button here, run? You can also use control enter as a shortcut. Let's see if that works now. Yeah, it's working fine, I guess. What it is do doing is it's just installing Maven, small command line tool, and now building the project using Maven. So your code completion, how is code completion capability compared to Google AI assisted code so coding solution? Uh, I never used Google's services, frankly speaking, but all of them can actually, you know, work pretty similarly the way uh, code is generated. Okay. Google and GitHub. GitHub has one advantage. GitHub has lots of code repositories, public code repositories from which GitHub has learned or GitHub AI has learned how to code in multiple different programming languages. I'm not sure how many languages Google currently support. Yes, that's right, uh, Utkrisht. Right? What it actually does, Google, uh, GitHub actually learn from the code which is already available in GitHub public repositories. But please remember, it never blindly copy paste the code. What it does is, 
it learns from the coding practices of general community and based on that it generates a fresh new code for you okay so it has more learning experience okay looks like my project unfortunately failed to build and that's because it's not able to find this particular customer repository class so there was a build error can i ask copilot to assist me with this hello let's go back to the copilot and what I will do now is let's ask Copilot a simple question. OK. Terminal. Fix the build. Fail. Let's see if Copilot can assist me here. Now, Copilot is actually giving me some instructions on how to do that, but I don't want the instruction. Let's say explain terminal This is not what I was expecting here, but the build error was because of this uh, controller Java class. So please remember. This is how Copilot will assist you. Now I will quickly fix this error and then we will go ahead to our actual use of DevOps and Copilot together. So it looks like. This was the controller. Then inside a repository we had customer repository dot Java. Cannot convert response entity wide. It looks like a simply expected object type, not the string type. The error message literally had everything written. Fine. I guess they should fix the errors and we should be able to build it properly now this time. Okay, how do you how do you now uh how do you now file does not contain controller class customer repository? Public interface customer repository.
customer repository. What I'll do is I'll, I'll use a different uh, project as a base for my DevOps project. I will just drop this one now for now. OK. So GitHub Copilot can help you with your project as a developer. But what about DevOps? Now for DevOps, these are some things like, for example, let's use a different project. This time what I will do is I will use VS Code, but with another of my project. Open folder and I'll select a different folder this time. OK, so I have this another Java project, a pre-created project on which I will show you how to use DevOps. So there is already a project called Library API, a Java project again, but don't worry. Now for this project, I wanted to use, I wanted to build this application, convert this application into Docker. Looks like there is already a Docker file present, but for a time being now, for a time being now, this particular project already has a Docker file. Can I use GitHub Copilot to explain me what this particular Docker file is doing? Yes. So let's use Copilot chat and ask Copilot to explain us about this particular. Explain the Docker file. Like for example, here Copilot is ex asking me what particular statement you want me to explain, like from statement, run statement, copy statement, work directory from whichever one. So let's say I want it to explain me from statement on line number one. So this is how you write it. This from statement here is to explain you what is your base file, okay, uh, or what is your uh, base image. Did you notice the example ex explanation here? They have given us a sample Docker file as well. Now, is it possible for Docker? Uh, sorry, is it possible for GitHub Copilot to generate the Docker file on the fly for us? Answer is yes. Let me try doing something like this. I will delete this Docker file now to recycle b and let's ask copilot to generate a docker file for current project let's see if it can do this generate a docker file for current java project Let's see if it can generate a Docker file for me. So looks like it is able to generate the Docker file, but obviously this Docker file is a single Docker file, single stage Docker file that it has generated. And I can just, okay, there is no editor open right now. Insert into a new, new file. And this will actually allow me to create a new file like this. So you will notice here, you can use this GitHub Copilot to generate a Docker file as well for your project. 
So it allows you to create a Docker file. You can either accept this Docker file or use the original one. What I will do is I will use the original one. The original one I have created earlier is totally good for me, and I just want to continue using it. Please do. They should get, get to me my Docker file back. Now, how it can help you in DevOps? Okay, so if I go back to this presentation, it can help me write YAML configuration files. Okay, now to give you an example, in case if you want to build this application on GitHub using something like GitHub workflows, right? In order to build it on GitHub workflows, you have to create a GitHub workflow file or GitHub action workflow file. Let's see if Copilot can do that for us. So what I will do, I will use Copilot and I will ask Copilot a very simple question. Could you generate GitHub action workflow to build container image of this application? Let's see if GitHub Copilot can do that for me. OK, so here is the GitHub Copilot workflow. Did you notice what workflow it has created now? Hello? Yeah. What I have got right now is a right workflow right there. OK. And it is even explaining me how this workflow works. Now, what if you are not using GitHub Actions, right? What if you are using some other CI CD tool? So can anybody explain or can anybody give me any uh, CI CD tool example? Anybody wants to build this project in GitLab instead of GitHub? Hello? Or anybody wants to generate a Jenkins file instead of GitHub Action Workflow? Jenkins? OK, Pawan has mentioned Jenkins. So let's create Jenkins Workflow for it. So let's say. Generate. Sorry. Generate a Jenkins file to build. Container image. Let's see if it can generate a Jenkins file now. What GitHub will do now, GitHub will go and check how many people were using Jenkins file, right? How it was built and de uh, depend on that, it will create a proper file for you. So you can see this is the pipeline generated Jenkins file syntax, the declarative syntax, by the way. This is the code generated by GitHub Copilot. OK, so here is the code. So you can see it has properly written everything. Now, yes, this is not complete because if you are using Jenkins file to publish and build this particular container image, you still need a private container registry or public container registry set up somewhere. So you have to update this part. Are you getting my point? <clears throat> Sorry. You have to still update this. And then this is the checkout, build, push, pushes to actually publish it to the container registry and then stage. And it has already given us all the return instructions on how to update this. Now, second question is from Jayan Isant. GitLab. Let's see if GitHub Copilot can generate a GitLab CI workflow. OK, so now it is using the same current Docker file to build this. So this is a GitLab CI workflow for the same project. OK, so this is GitLab syntax. You might have to make certain changes to this file. You cannot blindly depend on this, but yes, it will save a lot of time. And you know what is a normal issue with YAML files, by the way? YAML files. YAML files, normal issue with YAML files is indentation. Indentations. Right? Yes, and guess what? Many a time I have seen people who are using something like GitLab. Their normal issue is we know how to write GitLab CI, but many a times when we build our own CI workflow, 
The most common mistake is indentation issue. Our workflow doesn't work because somewhere the indentation is not correct. Now, guess what? Even though there might be something that is missing in this workflow, but indentation is always perfect. So you can just copy and paste it and then make certain changes to it. Are you getting my point? Right? So this or is GitLab's. Uh, we can use the AI assisted uh, migration tool, which will also uh, you know, maintain the indentation when moving right. uh, from one platform to another. For example, yes, from yes. Amazon, I can migrate to Azure CI CD or GitLab uh, right. and I can do vice versa as well. Yes, you can even you can even let's say select a particular workflow file and ask your GitHub Copilot to translate it into a different platform. To give you an example, let's say for example, uh, I selected this file. Okay, now this is my GitLab CI/CD file. So let me save this with file extension dot GitLab CI dot YML. So this is the name of the file. Okay, YML, you don't have to write it separately. It's already there, save as type. So this file is now saved. But later, let's say for example, later, what if I need to migrate this or what if I'm migrating this project to GitHub? Now GitHub will not understand the GitLab CI tool or GitLab CI configuration file. So what you can do is you can ask Copilot to translate this into GitHub action workflow. So, Abasi, you have used any AI migration tool specific? Specific tool? Yes, but it is a licensed one. So I just evaluated it, uh, but never used it uh, because it's not a open source, it's a kind of a licensed uh, one. Yes. And we were only yeah. planning to so use basically, it because we don't use Jenkins right. or we don't even use uh, yeah, this co copilot. Uh, we are using right. only Tekton. So we had some pipelines in Azure uh, and we wanted to right. migrate it to Tekton pipelines. Yeah, see basically uh, there are two types of people who use AI. Number one, people who use AI directly in their work, like you and me right now using AI Copilot directly to generate the stuff. And then there are people who use AI to build their own product based on AI. So right now there are a lot many different AI migration tools available in market but most of them are not free or open source. The reason behind that is that tool creator, tool creator is using some AI subscription like GitHub Copilot or maybe Microsoft Copilot, right? Or maybe Gemini, some kind of paid subscription. And that developer, he has integrated, she has integrated or they have integrated AI in their own tool. So you as an end user, you will use the tool to do a migration. And the tool behind the scene will use Copilot to do the actual translation. Are you getting my point? Hello? Right? So in future, you might get an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, which indirectly use GitHub Copilot or some AI tool to generate the code snippet for you. And what will be benefit to you? You don't have to actually go and subscribe for GitHub Copilot or any such AI tool. Your IDE will do that. But then you have to pay certain subscription charges to that IDE as well. OK. Yeah. So let's see if Copilot can translate this file. And yes, Copilot can translate this. So let's say. Translate this workflow. Let's try something extreme now for. AWS code build. Do you know AWS as a cloud platform also has their own DevOps service? Let's see if this entire document or this entire workflow can be translated for AWS code build file. And here is the code build file. Only small issue is it is generating everything right in this YAML file, which will actually make it difficult to understand right now. But this is something it will do in AWS code build. Right? Let's discard this. OK, you want to translate this into an Azure pipeline. You can do that as well. Right. 
let's see if it can translate this file into Azure pipeline. Please notice one thing. It has it is using this file as a reference. You just have to make sure the file is currently open in an IDE to use that file as a reference. And here it is. So everything is generated now, and this is a typical Azure pipeline to do the same activity. If you want to update the existing code, you can do that as well. Like for example, like for example, now this is a YAML file where Docker Hub username is not mentioned, right? Yes. And registry password and everything is not mentioned because everything I guess they are using environment variables to pass those values. CI registry user, CI registry password. And as a best practice, you should not include those variables here. Okay, they should be outside. Anyways, let's do one thing. How about I decide to take this on GitHub and actually build this from GitHub workflows? So before we proceed, let's see if it already is declared or if it is already there on GitHub. I'll just take, check if quickly if there is any uh, remote repository created for this. Looks like this is already connected to my remote repository sample library API. OK. I guess I don't want to mix that up with my existing repository. So quickly, let me just quickly copy this code from here to a different local repository and I build I will build it from scratch. Wait a second. Looks like I closed my browser window. So let's do one thing. I'll go back to my GitHub account. And here I'll just try to access library API. In my repositories. So this is my sample library API. It's a public repository. Even you will get access to this repository directly. Don't worry. So what I will do is I'll just share the repository URL with you. You can access it from here. Uh, let's create a copy of this repository. Let's call it my sample. I'm creating only a copy of main repository right now. So I'm just creating a copy of my own repository right now. Let's wait for it. And let's clone it on my local machine. On local machine, what I'll uh, uh, what I'm planning to do now on my local machine is I'll clone it somewhere on my D drive or maybe on E drive, and then I will take help of GitHub Copilot AI assistant to even create the workflows. So let's do this now. What I will do now is let's clone it to my E drive. And wait a second, I guess. On the D drive, I recently created a folder called Copilot Demos. Okay. And inside this, let me use git clone command to clone this repository now. Okay. So repository is cloned. It's my sample now. And for this my sample repository now, Let's start using Copilot to build this project. OK, so what I did is I created a repository now. OK, it's already there. Let's open this. In VS Code. And let's build it using GitHub Action. So what I will do now, I will ask Copilot how to do that. OK. Where should I create my GitHub action workflows? I'm asking this question to GitHub Copilot because I don't know where I should create this workflow file. So here, GitHub action is GitHub uh, Copilot is telling me that I should create my GitHub workflows in a special directory, GitHub slash workflows. Right. OK, so let's do that. So here I'll create a folder and I'll use this name. Dot GitHub slash workflows. 
Yeah, that created that. Now, I will ask GitHub Copilot to generate the code based on this workflow file. Okay, so let's do that. So let's ask Copilot to do this. Now you could be polite, okay? Kindly generate GitHub workflow to build and publish container image to my Azure container registry. And let me just provide some details. Okay, let me just provide few details. Now, what details? Like, for example, I have an Azure container registry created somewhere on Microsoft Azure, and I'll just provide some details about my container registry to it. Now, the resulting workflow will have all those details already written properly inside it. So, uh, the registry name is Mahindra Shinde, yes. So let me just mention the registry URL here. Okay, and let's see if it can generate the workflow for me. So you can see here, it's now generating a workflow for me called Docker image workflow, Docker image dot YML, and looks like it has already done everything. You can see the login server URL is this, and it expect username and password to be entered through a secrets, environment secrets. We'll explain you later. GitHub has this option of creating environment secret somewhere. Okay, fine. So let's see if I can just take this and add it here to the workflows. So this should be the name of the file. So let me copy this file name and let's create a file here with similar name. Oh, sorry. Looks like copy paste didn't work. Control C and let's create a file with similar name here. Okay. The name docker image dot yml is not valid. Please choose a different name. Why is that? Okay, there was an extra space at the end. Fine. So here it is. Let me just apply this in current editor or copy this to editor. This is my GitHub workflow, right? Now, unfortunately for me, let's say I don't know how to add these secrets. How do I add these secrets? So let's do one thing. Let's ask Copilot. Everything is already done here. OK, I guess I need to accept the changes. Now, let me ask this question to Copilot chat. Select it, Control I. How do I add these? Secrets. I don't know how to add these secrets. Now let's see if GitHub Copilot can help me with this. No result. Oh, sorry. How to add secrets to GitHub? Looks like it's still not giving me any help right now. Let's try to reframe my question. Generating. Fine. No answer. Anyways, I'm not sure why it's not helping me this time, but I already know where I should add the secret. I can add the secret and try this out again. Anyways, so this is all a workflow. Let's see if this works. Now, because it is a Git repository, any changes you make to repository, you must create a commit. But guess what? Every time you are creating a commit as per a best practice, how many of you have used Git version control tool? Hello? How many of you have worked with Git? As a best practice in Git, whenever you make a new commit, you should add a meaningful commit message. And GitHub Copilot will even allow you to generate the commit message for you. So let's see this now. Add GitHub Action Workflow for building and publishing image. 
don't you think it has generated the right message for the commit now? Or it is able to explain what exactly I did? Yes. Sync the changes, push the changes to GitHub, and let's wait for it. Meanwhile, what I will do now, I'll go back to this particular uh, source code and let's see if everything is published here properly. Refresh. So you can see here. Recently, I made one commit here, and if I click on this one commit, you can see the commit message written here is totally fine. It is like this. Add GitHub Action Workflow for building and pushing Docker image to container registry, and this is the change I made. If I now go to GitHub Action, you will notice. OK, it's not actually showing anything in GitHub Action. Set up a workflow yourself and now. Did I make a mistake here while creating a GitHub Action workflow? The name of the file here is GitHub Workflows. Right, so there is already a GitHub workflow folder I have created here. Let's go back. And. Oh, I'm looking at wrong folder. Not this one, actually. I should go back to the other project. This is my old project, actually. Let's go back. Go back. Go back. The repository I was looking for is in a separate uh, account, kind.cs. Here it is. And what I will do now is I will now click on the actions, and you will notice the action was already created. And did you notice GitHub has already run this particular action, the workflow? You will notice the action workflow has already run, and it is actually giving me an error saying the workflow build has failed. Right? Let's go and check the build errors it is actually because it's not able to log in into my container registry and registry name was a username variable was not supplied actually i did not supply both username and password i will show you from where you can provide secrets so what i will do is for this particular repository let's go to the settings from the settings let's go for the secrets secrets and variables action secrets and here you can either create this as a repository secret or as an environment secret. Let's create repository secret. And here I'll create a secret with exact same name what I have written here. ACR username. ACR underscore username. Just give me a minute. Username here is this at secret. And by the way, those who are using Jenkins, Jenkins also has a way to create secrets, right? In Jenkins dashboard. For ACR password, I will also get one of the passwords. This is a password for my Azure Container Registry. I have updated it. And let's rerun it. This was the workflow which failed. And OK, looks like under default setting, you won't be able to run these workflows manually. What you have to do is you have to uh, basically, you know, make some changes and do a push once again.
how about I just make some changes here? Like, let's say, for example, just an empty line. And. Updated secrets. Commit. And sync. This should trigger the workflow. Let's go back to GitHub and let's wait for it. Let's go back to my sample action. And inside my sample action, let's go back to this particular workflow. Looks like the workflow trigger. Uh, this is the new fresh execution of this workflow. Notice that. This should take some time for build to process completely, right? But this is the workflow I created using Copilot, right? Can we do same thing for Azure Pipeline or for the Jenkins also? Yes, Copilot can be used in those environments as well. Okay, so looks like it is successful now. The blue tick here means it was able to successfully upload this. Now I will show you the container image that it has uploaded now to my Azure Container Registry from the workflow created by Copilot. So looks like the build and push of Docker container image was successfully done. And what I will do now is I will show you my container registry. This is the container registry, private container registry. And inside this private container registry, let's go to the repositories. Sorry. Repositories and under repositories, let's see if the newly built application is already listed here. So looks like the library API is now uploaded here successfully. This is my library API and this is the time when it was published. Notice that. It was published just now, 16th November, 12.21 p.m. Right? This is the image published by GitHub uh, workflow. And this workflow, I created this workflow using, using uh, GitHub Copilot. Fine. So now what else Copilot can do? Now this was just an example of CI workflow. What is CI? Continuous integration workflow, but is it possible for GitHub Copilot to help me with the next option? 
which is what is the next thing it can help me with infrastructure as a code can it help me to generate some kind of infrastructure as a code some kind of code template using multiple different infrastructure automation tools infrastructure as a code tools how many of you have worked with something like terraform or ansible how many people here worked with terraform by the way any any uh, now those people who are not developers operations from operations from system administration from cloud management cloud administration what all infrastructure tools you have used you are not fine so what kind of tool do you use, Ravi? Development tool or operations tool? SQL, fine. You can also use a uh, copilot for generating SQL queries or even optimizing SQL queries. OK. Yeah, you can even use it for different uh, other different types of uh, deployment. Like, for example, uh, it might be possible that while deploying an application, you also need to deploy a database, database schema, or release a schema changes to database with every new release. Copilot will actually help you to generate that piece of code as well. Okay. Yeah. Just to show an example to Ravi, I will go back to this project. Right. Uh, okay, uh, not this one. Let's take the demo one that I created. Don't worry, it will not take more than two minutes. Yeah, here it is. I had this customer repository class. Okay, yes. And let's ask Copilot if it can generate a sample database. Generate a sample. database schema and data for unit test. OK, or for generating the test. Let's see if it can generate SQL as well. Oh, wait a second. It's instead of generating a code, it's actually generating instructions for me. Fine. Finally, can you see a sample data generated by it? Hello? But then you will notice one thing. I was expecting schema generation and it did not actually create, generate the create table statement. So what you can do is, but it is indeed running the unit test cases also. You can see this is the data.sql file. This is the SQL file it has created. You should keep this SQL file in resources folder and this is the J unit test case for testing it. Now, generate DDL. Let's see if Copilot can understand this. Oh, for generate DDL, it's again giving me instruction how you can do that from Spring Boot application. And yes, this is the create table query. Now think this way, Ravi. You got to work on a project where developer has already written a code, and from that code, you have to do a reverse engineering. Reverse engineering means code was already there, and by reading the code, you have to generate a sample database schema and some sample data. You can do that from here, right? Can it generate more than 100 sample rows for better testing purpose? It can do that as well. Let's wait. It's taking that customer repository for a reference, and here it is. Yes. Notice this. Now, this is the most boring work, right, Ravi? When you have to generate a sample database to be used just for testing purpose. People normally judge a search on internet, right? And then rectify it or further uh, personalize it. Here it's generating 100 records for me. Yes, done. Used to make it in Excel, right? Now you don't need Excel to generate this. But anyways, this type of tool, you need a subscription to use. Excel is free. Or not free yet directly. It's like your organization and you already have Excel. Tool is already installed. Okay, 
Fine, get back to the operations part now. For the operations part, what if I need to deploy this containerized workload, let's say on Azure or AWS or Google Cloud Platform. So can I ask Copilot to generate the necessary infrastructure there? So let's see if Copilot can generate that for me. Okay, so let's ask Copilot a different question this time. Generate a Terraform, a Terraform script or Terraform state to deploy containerized application in Azure container instance. Or you can use any other cloud service for that matter. Let's see if it can work now. Is it generating a Terraform template for me? Hello? Notice this. Yeah, so your platform team can use this now. So they don't have to always start from scratch. They can now get the template generated by Copilot. And what if you need not this, but something else? Trans, uh, okay, generate AWS cloud formation stack. Heard about it? For deploying. Beanstack instance. Can it generate that? Yes, Copilot can generate that as well. It's not just limited to Terraform or it's not just limited to Azure. Now, this is AWS Cloud Formation Stack template. Notice this. It's a YAML file and this is actually designed for AWS. To run this, you need AWS subscription, right? Now I have one more question. It's even actually explaining you how to deploy it from the CLI. Now I have a question for you. Can it generate Azure ARM templates? Anyone? Can it generate Azure Resource Manager template, ARM template, which is similar to Cloud Formation Stack, but for Azure Cloud? And if yes, then what should I write in Copilot? Now, this time I want you to write a message on a chat window. I will just blindly copy whatever you have written to my Copilot. And let's see if Copilot can generate. Yes. What prompt I should enter to create an ARM template for the same project? Anyone? Okay, so let's see. Generate ARM. Yeah, you can. You can be as simple as that, Priyanka. So let's say generate Azure ARM template, but it should be a little bit specific, like for deploying, let's say Azure Web App. Define the type of service and done. Let's see if it can generate a template for me. So here it is, the template is generated. You can see a normal JSON template, okay? And with the parameters, of course. And they are even giving me a detailed instruction on how to run it as well, right? So let's do one thing. Let's ask Copilot to create the Azure deploy dot JSON file. Let's see if Copilot can give me a detailed instruction for it. Oh, no, it's just repeating the same thing again. Fine, let's do it manually then. Uh, what I will do, I will create a separate folder for the deployment. 
And inside the deployment folder, let me create Azure deploy dot JSON file. And what I will do, the previous question which I asked, this one, let me add this to my editor now. Oh, oh, oh sorry, I made a mistake. Cancel this. This is a wrong template, right? The right one is this one. Let's apply this. Looks like template is applied, but quite few changes now. Quite few changes to this template. Like, for example, uh, I don't want to deploy it as a free tier service. So let's change that. Use premium SKU. Let's see if it can do that. Right? It did that. Premium V2. Fine. Accept it. But name won't be F1 then. This could be an issue now. Let's see if it can regenerate that now. Yeah, it is it now. P1, V2 is the SKU, premium V2. And this is the other details. Now it also requires a parameters file, which is right now missing. Let's create a new parameters file with all parameters. East US is the location name of the service plan is let's say my plan 0001002. And web application name is sample 00345. That's the sample application name. And my template is ready. Now that I have the template created, now this time I got this template created by Copilot Chat. But anyway, how do I use it in my workflow now? Remember the workflow I created earlier was just to build and publish the container image, right? In order to take the build image, and deploy it on Azure, you need another workflow file. Am I right? Hello? Now I need to create a CD workflow, continuous delivery deployment workflow. So let's see if Copilot can help me with this. Let's see if Copilot can help me with creating deployment workflow. Generate steps to deploy newly built container image to Azure Web App. Let's see if it can generate the required code. Meanwhile, I have also deployed Jenkins uh, to show you a demo, similar demo in Jenkins as well. Uh, but I just need to know if my Jenkins instance is ready now. Okay, meanwhile, you can see the code generated here. So you can either add this to an existing workflow like this at the end of this workflow, or you can create a separate workflow. You know what is better as per you? Keeping one single workflow for both CI and CD or having a different workflow for CI and different workflow for CD. Which one do you prefer? Which approach do you prefer? Having one single workflow for CI, CD both or different workflows for CI and CD? Priyanka has mentioned different one. Uh, Priyanka, what is benefit of keeping a different workflow, independent workflow? Hello. Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, it may happen that there are intermediate files which are getting created to be, you know, uh, I, I, I had in one of my projects uh, where mm -hmm. we had one workflow for uh, deployment. A one flow for okay. development, then those intermediate okay. files which are getting generated, we were putting it on some another repository. And then the right. second workflow was picking it up and uh, deploying it on the at production server. So I've seen right. that one use case of it. Yes. So basically, not just one, but you might actually create multiple deployment workflows also. Like there could be a separate workflow for deploying your application to dev QA environment and different workflow for deploying your application to staging and production environments. 
Exactly, because there are two different teams, right? So developers yes. will have only access to the developer artifacts, and the right. deployment team will have the access only to the deployment related artifacts. So that yes. there is no exactly. security violations or access control related issues. Right. So ideally, you should have multiple workflows. Putting everything in one single workflow will save time, but it should be done only when you are learning DevOps. When you are actually working on a project, there are multiple workflows you should maintain. Uh, just give me a minute. I guess my Jenkins is also now up and running. Only thing is I need to know what should be the username and password. Okay, I found the username and password. So this is my Jenkins now. I can show you how we can deploy this application, build and deploy this application using Jenkins. This is my Jenkins instance. And as you can see here, this instance itself is running on cloud. Okay, everything is ready. I can build my project in Jenkins, but for that, I have to create a different CI CD workflow file. Do you think this workflow will run with Jenkins? Because this is GitHub action, right? Hello? So if I need to migrate my DevOps project from GitHub to Jenkins, I need to create Jenkins specific workflow. I will do that, but before that, let's do this, complete this. So here is it. I can just for time being now, I can just include all these things here. So let's use this, apply an editor and wait for Copilot to merge these two workflows into a single workflow. Wait for it. Okay, so looks like it has added this at the end. So log in into Azure, but this time there is one more requirement here. Did you notice one more requirement here? What is it? Secret dot Azure credentials. You need to provide your Azure credentials to GitHub, and that's how GitHub will be able to deploy your application with this workflow. Notice the entire workflow here. It's also using my container registry URL, username and password to deploy application. And there are certain placeholders, by the way. This workflow will not actually work directly if I try to run it. Did you notice the placeholders here? Hello? Oh, wait a second. There is another issue here. It's not using the ARM template that I have created. Instead of using ARM template, it's trying to deploy this application directly by using Azure CLI. So let's change that. So I'll delete this and I will ask Copilot to use ARM template to deploy application. Let's see if it can generate certain code for that. Because the code it generated earlier was using CLI. Looks like it has generated a code, but with syntax error. Okay. So let me tell you what syntax error the indentation was wrong. So here it is. Just have to provide the template file, and it looks like even the location of template file is wrong. It should be in a folder called deployment. Okay, and here also I need to add this. It was not able to detect the folder because I didn't commit the changes, right? I did not commit those changes. That's why. Okay, so this will actually use Azure subscription and it will use the ARM template that I have deployed there to deploy the application there on this particular template. Resource group name. Need to provide some real resource group name, right? So let's say group 001 or 002, something like this. Uh, you need to make sure the resource group actually exists. And this is deploy an ARM template. And now next I want deploy application to the web app. This is the next step. So you have to provide the application. Oh, sorry, I, I pressed escape key and escape. You know what escape will do? Cancel the changes generated. Any questions so far? Hello? Anyone, any questions so far about this?
because I'm not going to deploy this on Azure now. I'm just generating the code, not deploying it actually. Just a minute, I guess so we should take a break here. And post break, we will discuss uh, how to do this thing with Jenkins. Is that fine? Hello? So, Sile, hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, we will take a lunch break here. OK, and uh, uh, then we will continue at uh, one fifteen. Is that fine? Yes, sir. fine, sir. OK. So should we leave this meet right now and then rejoin it on at one fifteen? Okay, thanks.
Hello everyone. Uh, I have an announcement to make. So can you please raise your hand if you are come back from uh, your break or in front of your system? Just raise your hand and keep it raised until I don't ask to put it down. Yes, Abbasi and Shivaram are back from their break. Anyone else? Participants, please raise your hand if you are back from the break. Okay, Lakshmi is back, Santosh is back, Ravi is back, Abbasi and Silvarama has already raised their hand. Anyone else who has? Yes. Okay, I'll make an announcement and I'll re-announce uh, when other participants rejoin. Okay. So guys, we are uh, starting with new batch. Uh, that's AI 102 and it's just for 2360 and definitely I bet uh, no one is offering this course uh, this is this will be the four or five days course and uh, the tentative dates are 30th uh, this will start in between 30th November and 1 December I'll just uh, share the registration link uh, guys remember this offer is just valid for this uh, session so if you are interested please register now as this is only for 25 people who will sign up Uh, so this course is uh, this the cost for this course is uh, two three six zero. That's two thousand three sixty only. Uh, well, the regular cost is fourteen thousand. So please go for this. Uh, grab this opportunity as no one is offering this uh, course at this cost. You just need to. Uh, sorry, does it require any coding? No, no. Uh, Santosh, you don't need any coding requirement. This will be the course uh, where trainer will announce like provide you knowledge from introduction to um, using how to use advanced so you don't require any coding language and don't about the payment or uh, you can pay in the evening you just need to register now Uh, well, everyone, I'll also be sharing the redem badge redemption link. And I already mentioned the steps for it. So please redeem your badge as this holds valuable. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yes, uh, I already 
put the link uh, to redeem your badge. So please, after redemption, you drop the yes or thumbs up. Guys, after redemption, please put uh, put yes or uh, drop a thumbs up in the chat box. So I'll know that you already resist, register and uh, redeem your batch. And if you have any queries about the course we have uh, launched, please put it in the chat box. I hope no one is facing with any issues. If you are, please drop it in the chat box. Uh, may I know the course duration? Yes, it will be four to five days. And this will be the virtual uh, session, I mean course. Uh, Ravi, we will be sharing an email uh, with the all the details. So you will receive an email till evening. No, don't worry about that. Welcome, Ravi. Okay, other participants, please raise your hand if you are back from your break. Okay, we will wait two minutes for other participants to come back. And I will re-announce about the badge, uh, badge redemption and course we have launched.
ओके एज इट्स वन ट्वेंटी आई होप एवरी वन इज कम हैज बैक फ्रॉम देर ब्रेक एंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ देर सिस्टम गाइज आई हैव ऑलरेडी शेयर द रिडम्शन बैक बैच रिडम्शन लिंक सो प्लीज गो एंड रिडीम आई हैव ऑलरेडी मैंशन ऑल्सो द स्टेप्स फॉर इट एंड आफ्टर रिडम्शन प्लीज ड्रॉप येस और रिडीम डन इन द चैट बॉक्स guys i reshared both the links for the registration for new batch and uh, batch redemption so please do it now and let me know in the chat box i hope no one is facing with with any issues am i right guys please reply as yes if you have reading your batch as we need to start with the session mahendra sir is waiting so please uh, just reply as yes yes then i guess we should continue now uh, yes sir yes, you yes sir you can continue now Mm -hmm. uh, so just a minute. I'll just announce. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, everyone, just uh, focus on the session now, and I'll re-announce it in the end of the session. So you can register and uh, redeem your badge at the end of session. So don't worry, okay? Uh, so you can continue. Okay. Now. Yeah. Thank you, Sailin. So here we'll continue, and as okay. I told you before. 
we will now implement similar things in Jenkins instead of GitHub as an alternate CI tool. So basically, I have my Jenkins instance up and running. Here you can see I have already logged in into a Jenkins instance. Jenkins, I have taken another example of Jenkins because it is one of the popular CI CD tool. And being an open source and freely available tool, that means you can try Jenkins on your local machine easily without paying any subscription fees or without paying any product uh, charges. Anyways, so this is a pre-configured Jenkins environment which I'm running right now on cloud. Okay. And what if I need to build this application with Jenkins? Oh, it looks like my session has expired. So I timed out basically. Need to log in again. Here I have logged in and I can create a new uh, freestyle project. Demo one. Done. And what I will do now is this time I'm going to use the same project which I have created earlier with GitHub. So let's go to the GitHub. And let's clone that project once again. This time what I will do is I'll take the same old project, but this time I will convert it into. Convert it uh, into a Jenkins project. So sample library API. And let's fork it again. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this into. A Jenkins project, so. Sample Jenkins demo. Okay, here it is. Fine. So the repository URL now is this. This is the repository URL. Now, for those who have never used Jenkins, Jenkins is a CI tool, a very popular CI tool, which actually allows you to automate your CI CD workflows. Many a times people do use Jenkins for a lot many other stuff not just CI CD, but for automating some other custom workflows as well. Right now in Jenkins, I'm just trying to create a new freestyle project. Let's say this is my sample project. This time, because Jenkins is running on cloud, I will give you access to this instance for a few minutes. You can explore the project directly. So I'm creating a Git project. This is the Git repository URL now. Here it is. There are no credentials required right now because uh, Wait a second. Yeah, because this repository is anyway public repository, open source public repository, no credentials at all needed. The URL should be this. Okay, right. Let me update the URL. This should be the URL. Okay, looks like there is a problem with my git command line tool. Probably I need to configure that. Internal error occurred while performing HTTPS. Uh, okay. Credentials are not required and branch name is main branch, not master branch. So name of the branch should be main branch, not the master branch. This is Git repository. Uh, I will not set any other properties now. Project is created, but I believe uh, it still requires some changes some configuration Git is not selected fine just give me a minute i'm i believe it requires some kind of uh, jenkins level configuration manage jenkins okay and tools let's see where git was configured here git is default okay git is already selected as a default and Looks fine. Looks like some plugins requires an update. I'll just update some of these
Okay, so Jenkins project. Now for this newly created Jenkins project, what I will do is I will open it in my VS Code environment here. Let's go back to the terminal. And this time I'm going to clone this new repository. This one. Now here I'm planning to use GitHub Copilot to generate my, uh, what we call it, Jenkins file. Okay, so git clone, and this is the repository URL. Once it is, imp once it is cloned into local machine, what I'll do is I will go and open it, in, open it with VS Code, and then generate the required Jenkins file here. So code plugin, VS Code. Okay, sample Jenkins. This is my Jenkins demo in VS Code. Okay, fine. Everything is now ready, and now I need to build this application with Jenkins. So what I will do is, first of all, I need to generate the Jenkins file for this project, and I will generate that. Okay, so let's say I want to generate a Jenkins file, so I'll write here, generate a build or generate a Jenkins file to build current project you are current project using docker file or provided docker file let's see if it can generate a jenkins file that will use docker file to uh, build and deploy this image this is not actually good this is wrong this will actually use a dockerized agent i don't want that so my prompt was wrong basically let's close that Generate a Jenkins file to build and publish container image. Let's see if it can generate the right file for me now. Yeah, so this is a Jenkins file or Jenkins pipeline right now. And there are still some placeholders that I need to fill in. Like I need to provide the image name, I need to provide the container registry, and I need to provide the Container registry credentials, all that I need to still update. So, what I will do now, meanwhile, let's go back to the Jenkins instance which is running here. It okay, looks like all this thing is pending. Here we are. Let's go back to this. Now I'll create a new job or new project using Jenkins file, but looks like there is some problem here. There is only one style of project supported, which is freestyle. Uh, do you know those people who have used Jenkins in past? Jenkins have write a quite few plugins that you can configure. Like for example, there is one called uh, Jenkins uh, 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 Blue Ocean plugin that gives you a new user interface and declarative application build. So I will set that up, but before that, let me just set up some credentials. For this particular project, I need to set up a credential. So let's set up credential in a default credential store, which is called global credential store. And here, let me add credentials for my Docker container registry. Okay, so let me ask this question here. How do I store Docker registry credentials or let's say as your container registry credential in jenkins so copilot will actually help you with lot many stuff like for example how do i store my acr credentials in jenkins ci2 so here it is github copilot is first assisting me, me with how to get the acr credential i know this already and then to store it in Jenkins, I need to go to Jenkins, manage Jenkins, manage credentials, select global, add credentials, and I need to choose username with password. So let's do that, username with password. Then enter the ACR username and password that you have collected earlier and store it with some name. So let's say the scope here is not required. Uh, username here would be username of my Azure Container Registry. So let me go back to my Azure Container Registry. Uh, 
for my Azure Container Registry credentials, I will copy credentials from here. Access keys, yeah. So this is my username. Oh, sorry, not this one. That's the Git repository URL. This is my username and my password. I will copy password from my Azure Container Registry. This is my password. Let's give it a name, ACR Credentials. Now, this is the name that I'll use in my pipeline. And you can add a description for it. Credentials to publish image. Okay, so these are the credentials you need to publish the image. So I created a credentials here, but I'm sure there is some issue with this. Let's go back to Jenkins. And from Jenkins, I'll try. Manage Jenkins credentials. Let's see if the credentials are stored or I'll allow to repeat that once again. No, it's not created. So let's add a credentials quickly. So first, the username. This is the username. Second, password. Password would be this one. And then ACR credentials. Description is optional anyways. I will quickly leave, click on create button. Looks like there is a timeout here. If I spend too much time in a, any HTML form, it's times out. Anyways, so here the credentials are stored and I'm planning to use those credentials later with my Jenkins file. Another thing I'm going to do here is in order to support Jenkins file, I'm going to install a plugin here. Let's go to the plugins and install this Blue Ocean plugin. Oh, wait a second. If it is not available here, that means Blue Ocean is already installed. And if it is already installed, I should call it like this from the URL. No, it looks like it's not working some way. Uh, looks like this version of Jenkins I'm using is not up to date version and there are some uh, issues with it. Let's go back to plugins, available plugins, and let's search for Blue Ocean once again. Yeah, I found it. Let's install the dashboard for Blue Ocean. All the other Blue Ocean related plugins will be installed automatically based on this. I'm not sure why, but uh, this installation is uh, having a lot of issues right now. Pipeline. Okay. Let's install just the pipeline plugin. Pipeline plugin is basically a plugin that allows support for Jenkins file or support for declarative pipeline. Otherwise, on by default, Jenkins allows you to create only the freestyle project. Okay, looks like the pipeline plugin has some missing components in here.
anyway let's get back to the code generation part so you can see here the entire pipeline is already generated here and what i can do is i can copy this pipeline somewhere in my current project let's say for example the name of the jenkins file should be jenkins file only and then apply these changes to the ide let's see this now so entire pipeline is now ready and in order to use this pipeline what you need is a working jenkins instance once you have the jenkins instance you can test this pipeline on that jenkins instance but before that you have to update few details like for example what should be your docker container image name and what should be your container registry url to give you an example i'm using container registry which is on uh, azure so this is my azure container registry url this is the credential id remember the credentials i created in jenkins while creating a credentials and Jenkins, I gave this name, ACR credentials to it. And then the name of the image. Now, for the name of the image, you should include the container registry name and then followed by forward slash image name. So let's say, for example, this one was my Jenkins team image. As usual, check out, build. This is to build the uh, application image using Docker build command. Please remember it will assume Docker file is already present in current working directory and use that. And then this is the publish command. Copilot can be used or Copilot will also be used to explain you some stuff. Like for example, do you want to, do you want Copilot to explain you this line? I'll press control I and let's say explain. I will just use a pre-created command forward slash explain. Okay, and then just enter. Now what explain will do, it will get the selected line and try to explain, explain you how it works. So you can see here, this is the complete explanation. Notice the explanation here. It's saying the active selection is a line from Jenkins file, which is a script used to define Jenkins pipeline. Okay, something about Jenkins. Now specific line, docker.build method is being called and this method is part of Docker pipeline plugin. Now for this to work, a Docker pipeline plugin should be already installed in your system or inside your Jenkins instance. If that instance is already installed up and running, it will then work fine. Otherwise, it will crash. Right now, the Jenkins instance, which I have deployed, has some trouble to work properly. The image is not recently updated. Just give me a minute. Manage Jenkins. Still some plugins issues. System. Okay, this I need to change. Uh, right now my Jenkins is running on this address and not on the local host. So I should probably change that. Okay. See. Okay, let's get back to the plugins installation. I just wanted to check if the pipeline plugin is properly installed right now. So let's get back here and check the pipelines plugin. Looks like this plugin is not made for the current version of Jenkins I'm using right now. Anyways, it says unsafe to use, but let's try to use it anyways.
Okay. There's still some failure with some other uh, supporting APIs. So this current version of Jenkins may not actually support it properly. Job one. Okay. And inside this job, let me check if I can use the Jenkins file now. No, it is still a manual one, not the Jenkins file one. Just give me a minute. Meanwhile, what I will do is I will deploy a different instance of Jenkins uh, that will simply allow me to run everything fine. It will not take more than two, three minutes. Meanwhile, this is the Jenkins file generated by Copilot. Okay, I do have a latest version of Jenkins to use. Okay, fine. So can it generate some other kind of code? Let's say, for example, uh, we have already seen how it can generate a Terra file or Terraform uh, template, or it can generate uh, Azure Container, sorry, AM, ARM, Azure Resource Manager template. In case if you are using any other type of tool, it can actually help you to generate that as well. Many a times for an application, if it is a containerized application, right? Uh, what if your application is not a one single monolith application? Instead, you might be building a multi-tier or microservices architecture based application. Your application might be based on multi-tier like front end, back end, or it could be a microservice. So if it is a multi-container application, you might want your application to have another different kind of deployment file, Docker Compose file. Anybody here worked with Docker Compose? It is basically a file that allows you to run, test and run multi-container applications. And here, Copilot can actually also help you to generate Docker Compose file for the application as well. Multiple different types of uh, uh, file generations you can do with Docker Compose, uh, sorry, with uh, Copilot anyways. Now, this is a new instance of Jenkins which I have launched, okay, with the latest Jenkins uh, version number. But we just have to do some pre-configuration or some kind of basic configuration here before we can use it. So just give me a minute. Okay, so Jenkins is already deployed, but it requires some post-installation setup, and I'm doing that. Now, this version of Jenkins is taken directly from the official repository, the latest version. Here I need to install certain things. Like for example, I want my Jenkins to use pipeline plugin. I want my Jenkins to have pipeline plugin. I want my Jenkins to use Git plugin. I want my Jenkins, sorry, not this one. 
I want my Jenkins to use Okay, there is no separate plugin for Docker. Fine, no worries. So for build tool, there is nothing specific required. Okay. For source code management, Git is enough. And I will also try to find the Blue Ocean plugin. Looks like it's not available in initial plugin uh, list. Fine. So with basic set of plugins, I will just try to get it now ready. Pipeline is already selected, right? Install. Installation did not run. Fine, no worries. We can just try this one. Install selected plugins instead of selecting plugin on my own. This is basically a list of plugins Jenkins has recommended. Installation won't take time. This is a cloud instance of Jenkins. Should be ready in just a couple of uh, seconds more. Okay. Done. I want my main admin username to be Mahindra. And password is password at the rate one, two, three, four. That's the password. And save and continue. Domain name it has already picked up. Instance configuration and Jenkins is now ready. So now this instance of Jenkins now, what I'll do is I'll first make sure it has the required plugins. So like for example, in order to build this particular Jenkins instance, I'll head over to the plugins and available plugins. Because this application is going to build using Docker, I will use Docker. But in case if I want to build application using typical Java Maven project, I should then install something like uh, uh, Maven as a plugin in here. One more plugin I need, Blue Ocean. Here it is. Install. Fine, looks like should not take much time for this to be ready. It looks like plugin installation is done already. And uh, I, I'm not sure why it's asking me for this. Yeah, I got it. I did one mistake. It's running inside a container. And when you restart the container, what it actually does, it, it starts a new, new fresh instance. Instead of continuing the old one, it creates a new fresh instance. I'll just create the user once again. This will make my instance ready. OK. And 
manage Jenkins plugins. Let's install plugin, but this time I'll not restart anything. Okay. Okay. Let's wait for it. I will not restart Jenkins because restarting here in this context is bad. What it actually does is it creates a new fresh instance of Jenkins on restart. Fine, plugin installation anyway won't take much time. And after this, let's go back to Jenkins dashboard. You can see here now Jenkins offers a blue ocean view. Now this is a modern look and feel of Jenkins. Here I can now use the Jenkins file approach. So first of all, let's go back to this particular project here. A Jenkins file is already ready, and let us me just make a new commit here. So what I'll do is I'll make a new commit. Let's generate the commit message using GitHub Copilot. This is Copilot generated message. Adding a Jenkins. Yeah, that's right. Commit test changes. And after the changes were committed, what I will do is I will sync the changes after the commit. Let's see. Meanwhile, let's go back here and let's create a new pipeline. Now my project is already on GitHub, so I will select GitHub. Now the repository URL. Right now this particular project is in this URL. So let me enter the GitHub URL here. Oh, wait a second. It requires access token. Then let's use normal Git. This is the GitHub URL or Git URL for the repository. After that, uh, it requires username and password. Uh, I don't think username and password is required here. This is anyway a public repository. So what I will do is I'll just hit the create pipeline button and wait for it. Let's wait for it. What Jenkins is actually going to do now is Jenkins will try to read the Git repository. OK, and create a project based on that repository. So you will notice one thing GitHub uh, Jenkins is already created a project now called Sample Jenkins, and this is the commit ID, and it has already started building it. Now, how come Jenkins already knew how to build this project? How Jenkins knew how to build this project? It's because inside this project, I already have something called Jenkins Find. And inside those Jenkins files, there is already all the steps already mentioned. So looks like it has failed to run. Let's see the log, why it has failed to run. So looks like the reason which why it has failed to run is this is the commit message, right? OK. Right. So looks like it is because you do not have Docker binding for this, like this particular project doesn't know how to build it using Docker. So some plugin configuration is required. Now those people who have used different DevOps platform like GitHub and GitLab, you will notice the stark difference here. In DevOps, when you use something like Jenkins, you have to properly set up your environment on your own, right? You will have to make sure your Jenkins is able to build all kind of project. Can I ask GitHub Copilot on Help me with uh, this installation. Let's ask GitHub Copilot how to configure Docker build in Jenkins. How to make sure Jenkins is able to build Docker images. So for that, these are the instructions. So GitHub Copilot gave me instructions saying you need to go to manage Jenkins, go to available and search for Docker pipeline extension and install it. If it is installed, go to manage Jenkins, configure system and go to Docker. So let's do that. Let's go back to the Jenkins homepage. You can just close this project and click on the Jenkins here. Then administration. Jenkins administration means it will take you back to manage Jenkins. From manage Jenkins, you have to go to configure system or just system. From configure system, 
you have to go for Docker section. And inside Docker section, you have to add the Docker uh, settings. Wait a second. Okay, looks like it's not here in this UI anymore. The instructions generated by GitHub Copilot might be old and not completely matching with the current uh, instruction set or current configuration. Here is Docker now. So let's say Docker is already installed on the system and installation root is auto detected. Okay. Save. What next? Create the Jenkins file and use it like this. Fine. Now let's also do Docker configuration here for Docker build. Okay, looks like the local firewall is not allowing me to use the Docker host on this machine right now. So I won't be able to build a Docker image for this project right now. Let's do one thing. Let's instead of building a Docker image for it, let's try to create a Jenkins file to just build a Java Maven project for this. So what I will do here is I will ask my Copilot chat to generate or replace Jenkins file to build Maven build using Maven instead of Docker. Let's see if it can update my Jenkins file accordingly. So looks like these are the. No, it is still using Docker. I need to change this. Build Maven project. Let's see if it can generate it now. So looks like these are the instructions now to build this project using Maven. So these are the instructions and everything. But as usual, you will notice that uh, Jenkins is a tool where everything you need to manage manually. So unless you have a proper Jenkins instance with all the plugins and tools configured, it's difficult to build this type of project. And of course, you can ask Copilot questions about like how to configure this. OK. Yeah. This build also I need Java and Maven to be installed in the Jenkins instance to make this run. And this particular Jenkins instance doesn't have Java or Maven currently installed, but I will show you the user interface here. Uh, so you can create a project. You can import Jenkins file into your project and you can simply expect GitHub Copilot to generate that configuration file, the YAML file for you. Other than Jenkins and uh, Jenkins and GitHub, you can use Copilot with other DevOps platform like Azure DevOps. If you go to dev.azure.com, this is dev.azure.com. Let me log in into my Azure DevOps account. Just a minute. No, this is my Azure portal, not Azure DevOps. Here is my Azure DevOps account. You have similar YAML file deployment or build YAML files in Azure DevOps also. We call them Azure Pipeline. And your GitHub Copilot can actually help you with modifying or with uh, creation of such pipelines as well. Like, for example, 
these type of pipelines can also be created by GitHub Copilot. GitHub Copilot can create these type of pipelines as well. Now, this is a classic pipeline. I need a YAML one. Okay, this is also classic. Okay, looks like this is an old project which is using old uh, uh, declare it uh, old uh, XML pipelines. This is another sample project, for example. Edit the pipeline. OK, most of the pipelines anyways, but in case if you need to convert these pipelines into a YAML, you can see this is the YAML pipeline. Or this is the YAML view of pipeline. You can also ask GitHub Copilot to generate a YAML pipeline for given project. So for the project, just the way I generated GitHub workflow, just the way I generated Jenkins file. Similarly, you can generate Azure pipeline as well for your project using GitHub Copilot. OK. And similarly, you can. Uh, use it for developing or building. GitLab or any other tool. Now going back to the presentation now. Wait a second. Yes. So as I told you, you can use Copilot to automate CI CD pipeline, you can uh, ask Copilot to create the repetitive task, so you don't have to write everything from scratch. You can also use it for logging. You can also use Copilot for monitoring and logging. OK, so in case if you need to monitor your environment, you can ask Copilot or you can let Copilot automate some of those tasks for you. OK, you need to generate a script. For, for the log aggregation, you can get help of Copilot to generate that as well. Rather, do you know that most of the monitoring tools nowadays also have some AI features built into them? AI enabled monitoring tools. Are you using any monitoring tool which uses AI nowadays? Anybody here who's using Datadog? Anybody here who's using uh, in any monitoring tool for for your production environment? Most of the monitoring tools nowadays use AI to further improve their monitoring capabilities. So if you use monitoring, if you use AI in monitoring, the repetitive task becomes automated, and most of the time AI will give you suggestions or AI will monitor everything and give you the direct results. And as I told you, or as I shown you earlier, you can also use AI to generate the unit test cases as well. OK. Now, the key use cases. I have already shown you these things. You can use AI to generate the CI CD workflow, not just GitHub Action, but for Jenkins or other platform as well. You can also create IAC template using Copilot. You can also Ask Copilot to generate the required script, Python script, shell script, PowerShell script. OK, and it can also allow you to or it will also help you in your developers to review the existing code or to generate a new code based on suggestions. I gave you an example here. We can also create a CI CD pipeline instead of Java project. You can also create it for Node.js project. How will you create a CI CD uh, pipeline for a Node.js project, for example? Let's say, for example, this is how many of you have worked with the Node.js or any, any JavaScript framework? Similarly, how I build it for Java project. Similarly, you can build it for Node.js also, right? So don't worry, it won't take much time. What I will do is. I'll just select some existing project of mine. And 
show you how it can build it. Flask is Python, sorry. Okay, let's say for example, this is an Angular JS project. Okay, and for this project, I needed to, uh, let's say, generate a build instructions. So it's as simple as building instructions for any other environment like Java. What I can do is I can just ask it to generate, generate. Wait a second. Let's close all these pop-ups. Generate. As you are pipeline to build this project. Okay, and GitHub Copilot can generate workflow to build this Node.js project as well. You can see it here. Okay. Did you notice there are still some issues with Copilot right now? Hello? Did you find any issues with this copilot generated code? I'm not sure why, but copilot simply assumes that all the projects are .NET project. So what you can do in this case is you can just change the prompt and ask copilot to build this. Generate. As your pipeline. build angular project be specific what kind of project you are planning to build using this okay looks like now this is perfect so it can generate project pipeline for node.js also what if in case your application need to be deployed somewhere on kubernetes cluster if you talk about kubernetes kubernetes is a container orchestration tool okay so kubernetes is a container orchestrator is it possible to generate a Kubernetes artifact for your current project using Copilot? Answer is yes. You can just ask Copilot to generate Kubernetes manifest for current project. Let's see if it can generate this YAML files, Kubernetes YAML file or Kubernetes manifest for this project as well. And you can see here it is able to generate this. So this is you are going to be Kubernetes deployment file. This is going to be the service file, right? Right now it is showing only just two of them. In case if you want to make any changes to this or in case if you want to generate something like ingress or volume, you can ask Copilot to generate that as well. Is that clear? Hello? Any question, any queries about Copilot now? So in, overall in DevOps, Copilot can generate lot many different type of stuff. 